the extract. I'm Kyle Meyer, and uh, next to me, wow, we just had, we just did a really cool tasting, and this was one of those tastings that, okay, so we drove an hour up here today, you guys, but I would have driven like We appreciate four, that. Oh, no. Well, no, hell's bells. The point is, I, I would have driven like... I flew like, 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you came from the furthest, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, no kidding, I would have driven like 10 hours for this gig. You know, Thanks. really, it's... um. Uh, I, I think you guys are, are familiar a little bit with the impact in the wine world that, uh, that, that you either currently have or are beginning to have. And I think it's very exciting, uh, this project that's happening today uh, between uh, two incredible, well, I think I can say wine minds now because you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're officially sucked into the business again. Yes, yeah? yes. Mm -hmm. Next to me is uh, Jean-Nicolas Mayo and, uh, and uh, Jay Boberg. And both these guys got the crazy idea of starting a winery called Nicholas J. Now, I want to first start off with the question, um, was this just a phone call? Uh, well, there was a long relationship. Um, jean Nicole and I have known each other since uh, the 80s, in fact, um, which we we're really showing our age here. But uh, we met in 1987 or 88. Um, you were attending Penn with my sister. And uh, just random, and I went over to her house. I was in the music business and, and went over to her house for dinner, and I met Jean Nicola. And I had had the good fortune of being aware of his family's wines. I couldn't really afford them at the time. I wasn't making any money, but I did taste a few of them, and we talked about it, and we became friends uh, from that point forward. I, he, he stayed with me a couple times. I stayed with him uh, quite a bit more in Burgundy, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. um, I took full advantage <laughs> no, uh, for no, different, no. Uh, different things, but mm -hmm. uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a long relationship. Yeah. It's been fun. You got in the wine pretty early, right? You got a little bit of yeah. a jump. Well, I, I mean, I was in college. I mean, not too many folks, because at, at the time, like, for example, like, you know, the, you're in your 30s in the mid-80s. That'd be late uh, well, how old? No, I was in twenties in the eighties. Your twenties in the eighties. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, let's not get too carried away. No, exactly. I mean, yeah, you know, it was. Uh, I don't want to give anything away. Let me, let me ask you something. How old do you think I am? Forty-eight. I think I'm forty-eight years old. You know, <laughs> but, but I, I'm just really curious because a lot of not a lot of folks would come to Jean Nicolas back in 1987 in their twenties and go like. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm down with your wines. And uh, probably he knew more about wine at the time than I did. You know, I was I was very young and uh, uh, living in Paris, and uh, I knew I was going to uh, uh, work at the Domaine and uh, 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 care about the family Domaine. Mm -hmm. But I had absolutely no experience uh, ex except for a few months at the university studying wine. But mm -hmm. this is not where you drink the most interesting wines and uh, really? where, you, <laughs> where you learn the most. So uh, yeah, Jay, Jay was already knowledgeable at the time. Over the years, did, did, was Oregon ever a curiosity to you? Was it always in the back of your mind that maybe something would happen? Or was it more of a thing like, I'm operating one of the greatest domains in Burgundy, I already make some of the greatest Pinot Noir in the world. Is this, am I, eh. No, it's, it's uh, I, I guess I always uh, wanted to do something uh, outside Burgundy uh, mm -hmm. or in Burgundy itself. But it's difficult in Burgundy itself uh, because uh, all the land is already taken. It's difficult to expand. Now, nowadays in Europe, it's a little easier to expand. They've lifted the ban on, on plantations. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, you could do it. But of course, uh, Oregon now offers a, um, a, an experience mm -hmm. already. And uh, uh, there are a lot of good wines already in Oregon. So it's, it's really appealing to try your luck in, in, in Oregon, in a region which is both new but has some experience and some track record. And is noted for Pinot Noir too. Yes. I mean, it's it's sort of uh, the fr friends of mine that are not in the wine in the same way that we are, but are just you know just love drinking wine, but are not like wine geeks about it. And I say, oh, I heard you started a winery is up in Oregon, and they go, oh, you're making Pinot Noir. So I mean, it, it, there's this assumption, assumption if you're in yeah. Oregon. I mean, Oregon really is known for Pinot Noir, which I think was part of the attraction. Yes, absolutely, and also part of the attraction was was was, was Jay. Jay, yeah. Uh, uh, because Let's not get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's, no, it's it's. I mean, such a such a project, such a venture is 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 really a lot, mm. and you don't necessarily want to do that alone. Mm. Especially, I mean, uh, especially in going to a foreign country for me. I mean, I, I 
felt totally at a loss and, and not wanting to, uh, to do that on my own. It's really, the, the technical part is already complicated because mm. it's different. You don't want to add on, uh, uh, you know, many other things, many other aspects, social, cultural, etc. So it's really, I'm, I guess I was waiting, you know, I, I've been visiting a number of wine regions, whether in Australia, New, New Zealand and elsewhere, and there are a lot of uh, nice regions uh, in the world, but I was also waiting for the right type of partnership there. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it's it's when you're out your home turf, uh, you can get totally overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. And, and we've been doing this now for, uh, well, we've made, what, 17 was our fourth vintage. We started a couple years. So we're like six years into this and we're still friends. Well, as you see, rule number one, right? Don't get into business with your friends, right? Yes, yeah. yes, 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 absolutely. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, you haven't it's killed each other yet. It, no, it's, no. It's funny. Ta-da. Ah, come on, don't fool around. You're going to get us killed. It, it's funny. We've gotten it's close funny. a couple times, but no, <laughs> no we haven't. No, it's, it's, it's funny. Jay, how much convincing did it take of Frijan de Glot to, to do this from your end, from your standpoint? How many? Well, to be fair, because um, I mean, it looks like the seed was already semi planted, but still, it's hard uprooting a, a, a vineyard from Burgundy and you know making that jump. I would think. Yeah, no, I, I listen. In, in all fairness, um, when I approached him, um, and and part of this came from encouragement from his dear friend and my friend up in Oregon, uh, mm -hmm. Veronique Duran, who he, he obviously from the Duran family, mm -hmm. um, and she and her father were pioneers up in Oregon, and and there was a strong. She just you know you and Jean Nicola will just do so well here, and the community will welcome you, and he's such a brilliant winemaker, and you guys will bring so much energy and mm -hmm. creativity and so much to to the region. Um, and so when I approached John Nicola, um, him being the very dear friend that he is, um, you know, he immediately said, maybe. <laughs> oh, that's huge, right? <laughs> I got a maybe, right? I got a maybe. Um, and no, what he said was, look, he said, um, for me to make wine in another place, um, I, I, we need to make sure that we can, uh, we can make a great wine, it's something that we think is a great wine. We have to be able to access the fruit. We have to make sure that we can get set up in a manner that we can be successful. And, and believe it or not, it's good, important for you too. You know, yeah. you, both of us, we need yeah. to be able to do it. So we spent two years um, uh, traveling to, up to Oregon. He came many, many times, uh, and I went up there as well. And we ended up tasting, uh, the, the people were very generous in opening up their cellars. Of course, they wanted to meet him and, and, and have him taste their wines. But we tasted over fruit from over 200 different vineyards um, before we ever made a decision in terms of trying to figure out what, we had a bit of a vision of what we wanted to do, but it was really formulated through these two years of tasting and meeting people and really understanding the different AVAs and the different uh, uh, soil, what, what came out of the different vineyards and so forth. And after that, he said, I think I, I think we can do this. Of course, what was really important is when uh, Jay told me, you know, I have a bunch of investors. You get uh, lavish pay. You will <laughs> you will fly business or even Near first jet. class. I, I really <laughs> don't remember and, this part, but he tells course, a funny story. And and, and and of course, when he told me that, I said yes, yes, I'm very interested. So of course, and uh, very classical, luring, and of course. Uh, <laughs> Uh, none of this uh, materialized, and uh, <laughs> I'm even happier. Yeah, yeah, exactly, that's, that's exactly. The, it's nice flying, that's Coach. We really yes, enjoy that. Yeah. Economy plus. Mm, for the discerning passenger. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is a startup. Okay, yes. we've been through this. Yes. We know. <laughs> this is how it works. Yeah. What was the, was the main philosophy to integrate to to kind of transfer the thought process of Domaine Mayo Camusé? into Oregon to make a Burgundian Oregon wine or were you always planning on making an Oregon wine from the start? Well, I I think I did not come with a set idea mm -hmm. and 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 of course, uh, you know, I, I uh, being a Burg Burgundian, I, uh, I think that Burgundy cannot be replicated uh, elsewhere. But I was um, in the set of mind that I wanted to observe and see what was uh, possible uh, in, in, in Oregon. And uh, um, yes, what works is, uh, you, you know, uh, transfer that uh, the same kind of, uh, of, of canvas, of principle. Mm -hmm. And uh, you end up with, uh, with, with wines which are different, but it really works to come up with the, uh, the same set of mind uh, with the same manners uh, from Burgundy and apply them to Oregon. It really works and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to say that uh, 
uh, we uh, I've discovered great uh, great wines of character in uh, in, in Oregon and mm. uh, I'm not trying to uh, make um, Burgundy in Oregon. It's difficult to uh, replicate uh, again, but mm -hmm. coming with a Burgundy perspective really works and helps. Mm -hmm. Do you think, because um, there's, there's a lot of younger vineyards, there's a lot of still figuring out soils, the soil types are different. Do you, do you, because you've, you've been, a, you've worked with the Mayo Camisee now for 25 years, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much there, right? So. Over the course, are you going to see an evolution in these wines? You know what I mean? Like, is it, are we just going to see an extension of this flavor profile moving forward? Or is there a capability of vines getting 60, 70 years old in Oregon? Or is it physically impossible? Will we see wines that we have never seen before coming from the area? As, as folks like you and, and Jacques Laurier and Veronique. And, I certainly, and, 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 certainly hope so. I, I certainly hope so. Yes, it's, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, uh, you know, with, uh, with age, you uh, develop character and distinction. And uh, you can make great wines with young vineyards, but really special wines uh, and, and character wines. Uh, uh, it comes with, with age. And I'm thrilled. To, do, to, to have discovered already wines with great character uh, that I want to, to foster, but uh, the, the, the best is yet to come. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask, what are some of this? Uh, what are some of the surprises? You know, like something you didn't expect, right? You know, have you had, or was it? It's Pinot Noir, Pinot, da, 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 you kind of know what you're getting into, but... We different. follow the same process pretty yes. much that yes. you do in Burgundy. Yes. Right, it's, it's almost it like was, a mirror image of what happens at Mayo. Pretty much, exactly. yeah, it was pretty much online. Mm -hmm. um, what happened after was really different, because yeah. uh, uh, the, uh, the wines have a uh, higher pH, lower acidity, so they tend to evolve quickly, mm -hmm. uh, and I was uh, not totally prepared for that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, um, tasting the wines first in November, right after harvest, that was great. Oh, I'm so thrilled. And then in March, really? What's that? <laughs> Same wine? Really? And Are you sure? Like, <laughs> well, I mean, here's the, here's the great thing about John Nicola is here he is, and I can say this, he never will, but here's one of the great makers of Pinot Noir in the world, right? And you've got him as your partner. He's sitting there, and you're going, you're tasting this wine, he's looking at it, and he's kind of looking, I go, why does it, t why, why does it taste this way? He says, I'm not sure. <laughs> and it's like, it's, he's so humble about the whole yeah. thing. He's like, I don't know. You know, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> and uh, no, the first... The but first, those wines came, came around, thank no, God. No, the first, were... the first lesson is that, um, you know, it's uh, sometimes, and this is a big difference between Oregon and Burgundy. You know, in Oregon, you tend to, uh, what's wrong? We'll do this, we'll do that, and uh, we'll, we'll rack, we'll mm. add this, we'll add that, and... And in Burgundy, generally, it's, well, it doesn't show very well. Let's wait. Keep it around. Yeah. 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 We'll see. We'll right. come yeah. back in a, in a month or two months and we'll mm -hmm. see. Yeah. And that approach worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that took a big leap of faith, uh, I must say, the first year. But that approach uh, really worked. But, of course, we have a longer cycle than most. Uh, yes. A lot of yes. folks in, 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 in Oregon will uh, do their bottling in July mm -hmm. or August, and it's, it, it's about cellar management to get the barrels in for the next vintage and right, so on and right, so forth. Right. And we had the good fortune to be able to wait and, and yes, bottle taking in December. The time, be, and so be patient, trust the wine. Uh, trust the wine. Yes. I've heard that several times. Yes, it's, uh, no, when, when, when you think you've... <laughs> I mean, when you think you've done your job right, and uh, and and uh, I've seen that in Burgundy too. I mean, uh, it's it's uh, of course it's difficult not to panic. It's difficult not to worry, and of course you cannot help. Uh, it's kind of like raising children, yes, actually. Being stressed, you know, when they get to be in teenagers, yes, yes, yes. and you think it's all gone wrong, right. yeah. and you're and you say, well, just wait, because yeah. all those principles mm. you tried to in, fill them with mm. earlier on, mm. they will come back. Mm. And sure mm. enough, mm. we mm. both have kids yes. now that yes. are of the age where. My God, they turned back into great human beings. So it's very similar. They turned back into great human beings. <laughs> hey, you said no. My kids will probably watch this. So I'll never hear the end of that. You said it. Well, you agreed. <laughs> so future, uh, you continue learning. Absolutely. It's an ongoing learning process. Yeah, absolutely, um, yes. But at the, at the same time, I must say you guys are off to a pretty good start. 
Thank you, uh, Dag Nabbit, mm. and especially uh, I, it's fun watching the evolution of the wines. I had a little mini vertical earlier today. It was really exciting watching 14 and 15 and the 16, mm. and really maybe you guys are thinking about dialing in a style now, huh? Based on well. Yeah, I think that uh, we, we're finding our, our path, uh, uh, and uh, we're finding that it's really Im important to have uh, the vintage come through, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so the, the wines may vary a little bit in style from vintage to vintage, uh, and uh, uh, we're quite uh, we, we we're quite proud of that actually uh, to have a, a a 15 vintage which will be a bit more upright, a bit tighter, and a 16 vintage mm -hmm. very. Very uh, generous and, and forthcoming. This is, uh, you know, this, there's no right or, or wrong uh, vintage. Uh, uh, it's just the diversity, which is well. Which and we're is not really manipulating the wines. Yes, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of, 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 for all good reasons, where people are making wine and wanting it to taste, you know, relatively the same year in and year out. And it's hard. Vintages, if you have different weather, it's obviously not naturally going to be that way. So you have to do different things to try to make it. And we, your philosophy, our philosophy, is to not do any of that. Yeah. And, and so you're going to end up with a warm year tasting, you know, quite a bit different than a really cold year, um, which is part of what we're trying to do. Huh. Well, guys, congrats on this uh, nail biting startup. Uh, hopefully, you won't have to fly coach too much longer. No, we'll be uh, flying coach. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wine business. I don't business. see the end of this. Yes, no, it's the wine <laughs> business. We're gonna <laughs> we'll find something else to spend money yes. on. We'll buy another vineyard. Well, it just keeps going. Mm. No, seriously, what a treat to have you guys in today. It's, uh, Thank you it's, so much uh, for having it's, us. Uh, it's bucket list uh, to do this. And uh, I'm really, really glad you guys spent some time with us today. Thanks Thank for coming you. up. I really uh, appreciate it. For having it. us. Yes, yeah. thanks. Cheers. 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 Yeah.